It was very scary. You feel very controlled, very restricted, because there's nothing you can do in that situation. It's just like you are in a prison, and you can't even uh, feel the floor, you know, because it's in the air. Nobody is there to help you. Nobody can. And that airplane is only equipped for so many hours. Normally, it flies one hour only, and maybe maximum they put another half an hour extra, or one hour extra, but it's not forever. The petrol, the fuel won't last forever. If they cannot come down, it happened before. One airplane could not come down, and they had no fuel. They just died, just crashed and died. Wow. It has happened many times. Different, different situations, you know. Yes. So of course, the people very panic, and I laugh, and it's very sinful. <laughs> <laughs> But I just remember so many jokes about airplanes. You know, <laughs> ah, there was a joke. Okay, there was a sport airplane, you know, and uh, they have only one engine, some uh, four seats or uh, six seats like that. Four seater airplane and the engine went kaput. When you have only one engine, then only God can help you. <laughs> I don't think He can either. <laughs> one engine kaput. What to do? Huh? Okay. The attendant came out and said, "Is there anybody here who can pray?" And nobody said anything. And, and then she asked again, "Anybody who can pray? Because we are in an urgent situation. We have no more power. The engine is kaput." So it's a very uh, uh, urgent situation. Any of you can pray or not? And then there came a person at the back, you know, maybe a priest or missionary. So I said, "Yeah, I can." She said, "Good, please. Everybody else, put on a life jacket and jump, and he stays here and pray." <laughs> <laughs> They're short of one life jacket, yeah. They're short of one parachute. So, so <laughs> everybody else uh, have a parachute, and that guy stay and pray. <laughs> So when they talk about the plane, I remember the joke and I laugh. And they look at me again. I said, "Oh, sorry, no." <laughs> I'm praying also. We are praying together, okay? <laughs> and then later, I, I laugh again because it was too long. This circle too long, and it got on my nerves, of course. But I remember all these jokes, just like when people are dying, they remember all kinds of things. <laughs> And I was thinking maybe this is a sign that I might be dying. Who knows? Because I remember people saying that before you die, you know, all the things flash back to you very quickly. <laughs> so all these jokes keep flashing back to me. So I was laughing again because I remember another joke about airplanes, <laughs> about flying. Remember, I told you all these jokes, but. It was very concentrated yesterday. It was all flashing back, just like before you die. The last minutes, everything flashes back to you. That's what they said to me. So anyway, all the jokes just came flashing back. Now there's another joke. Uh, the pilot uh, radio to the control tower saying, uh, "Mayday, mayday! I have uh, one engine kaput. What am I to do?" Uh, so oh, just uh, hang on in there and try to try to land emergency. And later he said, "Mayday, mayday! My tail is burning. You know the airplane tail was burning. What am I to do?" I said, "What? Well, just try your your best and control and land quick." And then another, "Mayday, mayday! The last engine is kaput, <laughs> <laughs> and both uh, wings are also broken. What am I to do now?" So the control tower radio back to him and say, "Repeat after me, sir." <laughs> <laughs> Our Father in heaven, <laughs> hallowed be your name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What else? <laughs> What else to do? Yeah. <laughs> And then they look at me again, but they were fed up with me, so they didn't care. Okay. That's it. That's why I'm getting serious again. And I'm <laughs> And then I laugh again. <laughs> What to do? All the flashbacks, you know. I remember another joke. <laughs> remember the joke I told you about an old woman who was learning to fly helicopter? No, no? I, I did maybe in Chinese. She was already getting to the stage where she could fly by herself. Yeah. So the instructor let her fly, né? And the instructor told her, "Okay, when you go up there." Uh, about 300 meters, you radio us. You say you're okay. Everything's fine. You check the control or the button. Everything okay? Yeah. So 300 meters up there, she radio. I'm fine. Wonderful. I'm enjoying. They also told her every 300 meters, she should radio down. Yeah. Okay. So keep one, two, and second time. Okay. I'm enjoying. Weather's fine. Oh, it's good. I see very far. 
And then another later on, about two three times, she radio down, says she's fine, yeah, enjoying, and the machine is flying fine, nothing happened. And later on, uh, when she went higher, they didn't see her anymore, and she didn't radio down anymore. They kept calling her, but she didn't answer. And then suddenly it came, and the like helicopter <laughs> <laughs> dropped right in front of them. And luckily the lady was still alive and came crawling back out and said, What happened? Why didn't you radio us? So well, I went up very high, I was enjoying and I was going to call you, but it was too hot, I turned off the fan. <laughs> uh -uh. It was too cold, sorry, it was too cold. Because she went up very, very high and it was too cold up there, so she turned off the fan, she said. <laughs> so that was the last joke that I laughed about on that uh, aeroplane, the circulate aeroplane, and then they said, oh, we can come down now. <laughs> Everybody oh, was very happy. I said, uh, continue praying, it's okay, until we land, okay? <laughs> yeah, so that was it. Huh? Why did we talk so much about this stuff? <laughs> huh? Oh, why, why? why? <laughs> huh? Because your My trip? Because of my journey? Okay, never mind, whatever. It's not important, it's gone, it's behind me. <laughs> yeah. But that was a very, very... Uh, Please, somebody didn't want me to come here to see you. Even on the last trip, they played a joke on me. I said to the guy, Okay, um, if somewhere near Klagenfurt, the nearest, then you tell me. The nearest, but has a connection to Klagenfurt, you tell me. He said, Okay, I know it. I, I check everything and I wake you up on time. But if there is no train connection nearby, then I won't wake you up until we get to Munich. And then you take another train and then another train and another train then. I said, Okay. And then he never woke me up. In the morning, he came, sunshine, hello, you're fine, yeah, <laughs> have a good sleep. I said, yeah, thank you, how about my train? Is there any news? Because I didn't know anything, you know, I just stepped on the train, I didn't know which connection, I didn't know how. The next one, I didn't even know, so I rely on them to check for me. So, oh, last night, I checked, there is a train from uh, so-and-so place to Klagenfurt direct. Uh, wh why didn't you tell me then? Well, then you have to wait like a uh, couple of hours. I thought it was not worth it, so I let you go. <laughs> All the way to München is even further than that. Yeah. Even three, four more hours. And he didn't want me to wait two hours on the platform, you know, a train station, walking up and down. I said, I don't have to walk up and down. I can go to a coffee shop, yeah, or go dancing and come back. <laughs> <laughs> it's nearer, more direct, and then I don't have to change the four more trains, you know. But he said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't think that far. <laughs> he thought, only this far. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then, okay, when we were going to München, and I said, but in between times, there may be another station somewhere that has a direct connection with Klagenfurt. Huh? Or maybe in München, even a direct connection, because there, he would tell me, oh, two, three more trains to change. And I walk with my high heels, you know. I didn't know there would be so much trouble. But then uh, he didn't tell me anything. When we go to München, he said, here, here's your train timetable. You know, you go here to here, and then you change to here to there, and then there you change to there, and there you change to there, and then you get <laughs> to the <laughs> And then, okay, go buy a ticket. Because I already told him if there's a direct train, he should tell me. Buy a ticket, go on there. He took me onto the train. He even helped me to bring my luggage. I didn't have much luggage all the back, but he helped me to bring, you know, a handbag about this size. Yeah, he helped me uh, bring it because I was good, <laughs> you know, pay full price and give tip and all that. So he helped me to bring my luggage to the train. Okay, and what happened? He seated me in first class. He said, here, it's very good for you. You sit here, fine. And they'll come and you pay. You don't have to go anywhere and they will show you where to change the next time. I sat there. Then the train almost began going. And he told me, you know, there is a direct train to Klagenfurt, but <laughs> 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 from there, you know, from München. But, you know, uh, <laughs> it takes another two hours, so I want you to go on this train. <laughs> Again, that guy. You know, this is men's stuff. They decide for you. They don't even ask your opinion. They don't learn. Last time I already told him, this time he didn't learn also. He said, but this is quicker. It's also fine. But what if I could not make it? Be between the trains, it's only 10 minutes sometimes. Yeah. And I, I'm lost, you know. I just new new places. And I don't know where to go. And I, oh, sometimes people don't even talk to you or don't tell you. But I made it, you know. But I had to run like... 
like the best runner in the <laughs> Olympic Games. <laughs> What's his name? I think if I run with him, he will lose for sure. He'll lose for sure. <laughs> He doesn't know. He doesn't know what it's like when I, I lose one airplane and run to another uh, to to catch on time, and then run again and run again and run to the train between the platforms. And uh, he doesn't know that. <laughs> That's the secret of a marathon, you know. <laughs> okay, what now? So did you walk around a little bit? Yes. You don't have to, but whoever likes to go, go. Just don't go too much in the same direction, the same place, or don't don't group together for photos. <laughs> Look, <laughs> you know, <laughs> jeez, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and don't need to bring this around. Just put it inside, okay? If you go out, yeah, here it is fine. All right. Yeah. Actually, just for the beginning, you know, first time. Yeah. After maybe. People will understand more, and then it's fine. That will be okay. If you behave yourself. <laughs> it's all right. Nothing really. I just just don't want to disturb people too much. You know. Yeah. You don't want to make a lot of noise, no. <laughs> okay then. It's cool, hey. Not too bad, eh? <laughs> so you want to go in to pray, or you want to walk around a little bit until eight o'clock? It's fine. Yeah. You free until eight, huh? It's good. Or oh, you want to go immediately? Mm -hmm. You want to be free? Like walk around a little bit in the cool? Go swimming? <laughs> no? <laughs> no? No? Too cold? <laughs> it's okay. So what's the use of living near the, the, the lake? <laughs> the warmest lake in Austria. <laughs> the cleanest lake. <laughs> you prefer to be near the ocean, huh? <laughs> near the sea. Oh, sure, they don't. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but you can't really sit here all day. I mean, you come here, enjoy a little bit, be normal, you know, like a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> and if later we need a bigger place, then we see. Right now we're okay, right? Yeah. We shouldn't be too greedy, no? Yeah. Better to have a lot of people warm and 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 just enough room than big many rooms uh, empty and nobody comes. Like many churches or temples, <laughs> <laughs> so big. Remember the one in Duisburg nearby? Oh, so empty, empty. Now and again, they come a wedding party. That's it. Yeah, is that what a church is made for? Huh? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and we sit together in a smaller room. Yeah. But after I die, there will be big churches everywhere. I'm telling you, <laughs> the same every time. When the Buddha was alive, he didn't even have a big temple, maybe one or two by disciples built, but not just an empty tired temple everywhere. And when Jesus was alive, he, he didn't even have shoes. Yeah? He had to hide everywhere all the time. He worried people would catch him. Yeah? He could not even stay in one place sometimes. He said, the Son of God doesn't have anywhere to lay his head. And then after he died, look at how many churches we have. Empty, some are empty, some big and empty. Cost a lot of money. Huh? Well, if they don't need it, they could give it to us, you know. <laughs> Sharing is believing, no? <laughs> uh, we repair it, huh? Yeah. We pay for electricity, <laughs> water, yeah, and food. And we repair. That's the best way to use the church, right? Go and pray to God, meditate for mankind, no? Yeah, but of course we shall be patient. We can't talk to the world. Not really, not still not yet. The mind, no. The soul, yes. The soul they understand the mind, no. It's a, it's a very bad thing. <laughs> the mind. The mind makes a lot of trouble. Hey. It would be really fine if you tell us where you could build those churches now. <laughs> I don't know where. As long as the people can gather together, I don't care. I don't need churches. Actually, just need people to leave us in peace. That's all. I can pay for a church. I can pay for a place. It's just so. Just leave us. That's all. We don't even need anything. Yeah. We don't even need a luxury place or just decent, clean. Yeah. And uh, next to the sea, if possible. <laughs> Summertime. When the living is easy, fishes are jumping and the cotton is high. Your daddy is rich and your mama is pretty. So 
Hush, little baby, don't you cry. 